Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're looking at DxO Photo Lab 4. Today I want to take a close look at the uh, HSL and DxO Color Wheel and Hue Picker. It's a really powerful tool for adjusting colors in your images. You can change hues, you can do a lot of different things with it. I'm going to show you some different uh, images we're going to experiment with and just show you the actual power of this particular tool. This tool is found in both the Essential and the Elite Edition. Without any further ado, let's check out the HSL and DxO Color Wheel and Hue Picker. Let me start off by saying I love the new smart workspaces in uh, Photolab 4. Now, up at the top of the tools here, you'll notice we have these different icons, and this is part of the smart workspace. These are your light tools under here. The next section here with the three circles is your color tools. This is where your HSL color tool lives. And then, of course, we have detail, geometry, local adjustments, and special effects. So let's go to the color tab here, and you're going to find your HSL tool inside of here. Now, if you want to expand all your tools, if you right click on any one of the tools and click expand all, they all will expand and open up. However, if you want to collapse all the tools, but the one that you're working on, which can be really handy to keep the confusion level down, just go to the tool you want, right click anywhere on that tool and say, and click on collapse all. And that'll collapse all the tools, but that particular tool which I think is a really smart way of working. It keeps the confusion level down. Let's take a look at the various components that make up the HSL tool here. Now we have channels at the top. Now you'll notice we have these circles. Uh, right now the yellow circle is selected and you'll see on this wheel here, the yellow uh, information, color information has been selected here for us. If we click on white, that will be the global color adjustment right here, okay? Now you'll notice uh, the, the color wheel changed a little bit because when I was on yellow, you see it was just targeting a certain areas of yellows here. But when I click on white, it's encompassing all the colors here. And of course, you click on any color you want, like red. There's your reds. Here's your oranges, your yellows, your greens. And you notice how the greens is a wider area of information here. And then, of course, we have cyans, blues, uh, purples, and we have magentas. And then you have a global reset of this tool right here. So click that to reset. So if you come here and change any adjustments on any of these uh, sliders here, if you hit the reset, everything gets set back. Let's start out on the uh, global adjustment right here. The global adjustment is pretty cool. All it consists of is this circle right here. You can see this line coming through in this circle here. Now, if you left click this with your mouse and start to drag, the outer ring starts to move. The inner ring stays stationary, right? So watch when I move, start to move this. Notice how the entire colors of my image start to change. I can get some really cool special effects here by just moving this global wheel around here, okay? And then I can bring it right back to where it was. And by the way, wherever you move it, if you want to set it back to where it was, just double click this circle and it'll set it back. But let's go ahead and move it here. I'm going to move it over here like this. Now, remember, my sky was blue, but you'll notice our inner circle here, which has not changed. Blues are now reds. And if you look at my outer ring, I moved my outer ring so my reds were over my blues. Okay, now my grass was green, right? And now if you look at my greens, there's blue over my, over my greens, okay? And that's why they changed. So... In other words, if there was yellows in this image, they would be more cyan. And there was some yellows in this barn here. And you can see some cyan colors there, right? So wherever you turn that to, globally, that's going to change things. Now, I'll tell you how I really like to use the global wheel here. Let me double click it and set it back. If I want to slightly alter my tint of my image, I can take this uh, circle and move it to the, move it up or move it down, you know, and I might find a little spot, just a little bit of movement here may alter it just enough to get it to where I want it to look, to get it the way I want it to look. In other words, if I, if that sky looks too blue, if I move this up, I can get it a little more towards the cyan side of things. So I might say, you know what, right there globally, I like that adjustment. Now let's take a look at these uh, colored circles right here. Say for instance, on this image, I want this barn to be maybe darker a little more colorful so what i'll do is i have to determine like what color is this barn now it, it kind of seems like it's in the orange and yellowish tone so i could go ahead and click either oranges or yellows here let me just click yellows 
All right, and you'll notice it targets my yellows right here. Now let's pay attention to these circles. See the circle right here, 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 and these two circles in here. These two circles in the, on the inside of the wheel right here, these represent uh, extending or reducing the color range of this color right here. So if I take this circle right here and move it, you notice how I widen out this uh, color range. And if I grab this circle and move it, I can widen it out this way. Okay, so that is widening the color range, and if I pull them closer together, I'm reducing the color range. Okay, very important, and I'll show you how this works here in a little bit. But to reset it back, remember, I can either double-click right here or double-click on the uh, color circle here. All right, now, these other two circles here, this one and this one, this deals with, like, uh, think of it as feathering your color range. In other words, softening the color range by pulling it out into these other colors. You can pull this one, you can pull this one. So it kind of like softens it. And so it, it either makes you softer transitions when you move it out or more pronounced transitions when you move it in. And again, I'll demonstrate that shortly, but let's double click this and get it back. And lastly, the outer circle here, if you click this and drag it, you'll change that color to any color on the color wheel that you want it to change to. And I'll show you that again too on, on another example. You'll really see the dramatic changes I can make with that. But just hang in there and just follow closely along. If this sounds complicated, believe me, I'm explaining it to you right now. It may seem a little complicated, but after you see me do some real-time adjustments, you'll say, man, this tool is really easy to work and super powerful. So bear with me here. I just have a couple more things to show you, and then we'll get into the real-time adjustments with this HSL tool. Down below the uh, color wheel, we have three sliders. We have a saturation slider, a luminance slider, and a uniformity slider. Now you'll notice right now we have this uh, yellow circle selected and here is that color represented on our color wheel, the color range of that color. And you'll notice where it says saturation, you see this is yellow here and we have yellow and luminance here. Now, what saturation does simply will make that color yellow more saturated or less saturated. The luminance, if you move it to the right, it will make that color lighter. It'll make it darker if you move it to the left. And then we have the uniformity slider. Now, the uniformity slider is really unique. If you move that slider to the left, it will increase the shade variations of the color you have selected. If you move it to the right, it'll reduce the shade variations of the color that you have selected. I'll show you this in a, in a little bit here, and it'll make sense to you. The last thing I need to show you is the hue picker tool, and it's found right in the center of the circle here of the color wheel. All right, now you'll notice right now that tool is active because it's not grayed out. If I come up here and click on the global channel right here, the white, you'll notice it's grayed out. And if I hover over it, it says select a color channel to start using the U-Picker. So it's very important. It only works if you have a color selected, okay? Now let's select a color here. Let me select uh, green for the grass, okay? So let's click on green here. And now we can come here and click on our color picker tool. But notice here, this is the area of green that it defaults at, okay? Whenever you click on the green uh, circle here. But if I click the uh, hue picker here, and now come down here to my grass, watch how this wheel will change. It'll slide over to the right a little bit when I click on the color here in the grass. Did you see that move over there? Once you're done picking your color, you can go ahead and close the Hue Picker tool by clicking on Close. For now, let's go ahead and reset this tool right here and start from scratch. Now say for instance, I want to uh, change the color of this barn right here. I think it's a little too light and I want it to have a little bit more saturation. So here's what you need to do. You need to pick a color that you think it is. Now I think it's more of a yellow or an orange. But in all honesty, I could pick blue if I wanted to, because whenever I use the color picker tool, it will select that range of colors, okay? But I highly recommend that you pick a color that's close to what you want to use. It just makes more sense. So let's click on orange. And now let's make sure we get our color picker tool here. And let's click an area of the barn. Let's say maybe right here. All right. And this is that range of colors that is picked right here, okay? I want to make it more saturated. So I'll take the saturation slider and start to drag it to the right. And you see that I've added more saturation to the barn. Now I could take the luminance uh, level here and I could move this to the right and lighten the barn or move it to the left and darken the barn. And I think I might want to darken that barn a little bit right there. And see, it's only uh, 
working with the barn. If I need to fine tune my adjustments, I can use these outer circles to uh, feather my transitions, or I could use the uh, bottom circles to uh, reduce the color range or widen the color range. Or I could use the circle on the outer ring here to change the hue of that particular color. In other words, I could change the barn color to any color I want. I could make it a bluish color if I want to, whatever I want. But I'm going to keep it right where it was. Let's go ahead and close the uh, picker tool here. Let's move on to another image. The more we do here, the more this will make sense to you. Let's start out simple. On this image, I just want to make the red around the window here on the framing around here a little more saturated. And maybe this area up on the roof, give it a little more saturated saturation to this bluish green area right here okay so let's start out with this area we know this is a red so we can just click on red and that's going to target the red colors or i could have used my picker tool and just click that on but i think it's a red and i think it's going to be fine so let's just give it a little bit more saturation just like that we could brighten it up by moving the luminance slider to the right a little bit we can lighten that up a little bit Let's give it a tiny bit more saturation. Now anything red, even these flowers, they're going to get affected as well. But we can click this toggle and see the before and the after. Okay. And maybe I'll just darken that a little bit. Maybe right there. Okay. And now we want to work on this color right in here. So this time let's use the picker tool. Now this is like a bluish green color. So more of a cyan. So let's click on right here, the cyan. And let's use our picker tool and pick this color right here. And you see it's shifted here a little bit. Now we can close this. And now we can take our saturation and bump it up. So we can give it a little more saturation. Okay. And let's play with the lumens. Let's darken it. That darkens it. That lightens it. I'm going to leave it right where it was in the center at zero. Okay. And then we have the uniformity slider. We can make that colors more uniform or less uniform. Now if I move this the whole way to the left, Look at these colors here. You'll see more variations of hue in here, but when I move it to the right, it they all become more of that color right there, okay? So I have that saturation up pretty full there. Now again, I could toggle the HSL here to see the before and after. Or the other thing I can do is come up here where it says compare and I can left click this with my mouse and see the before and here's the after. So that's pretty simple. So a nice little change on that image. Let's move on to our next image. Okay, here's a poppy and let's do a global adjustment on this. So let's click on channel, the white circle, give that a click and let's adjust the global uh, setting on this for the hue. And maybe let's warm it a little bit, warm the green tones up a little bit, maybe something like right around there. Now I want to work on this poppy here, okay? So let's go ahead and that's like an orangish red type color. So let's click on orange and let's take our saturation and pull it the whole way to the left. And as you can see that I didn't hit the color right there. That's not, that isn't an orange. Okay. So let's double click right here and get this set back. Let's use our color picker tool. Click on the color picker tool. Now we'll click on the uh, poppy. And now watch when we take the saturation, move it back to the left. Now we picked that color, but we've missed this color right here. So let's see if we can pick that color up too. Now remember, we can use these two circles to extend or reduce the uh, color range. So let me try extending the color range. I'm going to work with this circle first. That's not doing it. Okay, I'll try to get back where it was. Let me try this one. Oh, it's this one. Okay, so I'm going to extend that color range a little bit, like right, right there. And now let's work with the feathering here. See, I'm, if I go too far, I'm getting getting up into the greens up in here. So that's way too far. So I might, yeah, I can even pull this back a little bit. I think right there is good. Now, this is my little trick, pulling that saturation back. So I know I, know I selected the actual poppy itself. So now I can take the saturation and pull it up, give it more saturation. I can lighten it up a little bit. Maybe just a little wee bit, give it a little more saturation. Then I could take this outer circle and I might say, you know what? I want a blue poppy. Okay. Or I want a, is there a pink poppy? You know, that's probably too, too much color, but now I have a pink poppy, but let's say we want to keep our orange poppy. So we're going to come back to where it was. And again, just a little more saturation right there. Something like that. 
and let's click our HSL toggle off before and there's after on to the next image and we have this bird now this particular bird I, there's a bit of a blue cast on this entire bird here so a real quick fix for that is to simply come up here and click on the blue circle that targets our blue colors take our blue saturation and just pull it back till that blue goes away right there now i can also take this luminous slider and move it to the right a little bit and maybe just lighten the areas that were blue just a slight amount of lightning there just a little bit not much so that looks pretty cool so that's a quick and simple fix let's move on to the next image here's a fun little image let's alter the background colors so we know it's going to be a yellow so let's click on yellow and let's get our targeted uh hue picker target tool and let's just click on a yellow area right here okay let's take the saturation the whole way off okay and we can see what's getting affected now a little bit of our skin tones being effective here affected here so let's see if we can adjust this and hone it in okay i'm going to try to miss some of that skin tone so i'm going to pull this in a little tighter let me widen it the range out this way a little bit more you know something like that and let's play with our Let's see what our feathering does here. Just not doing much on that side. How about this side? See if I go too much, it's going to start picking up her skin tones. And I don't want to do that. So I think I'll, I'll try that. Let's try that right there. Now let's double click saturation and get this back to the center. And now let's go ahead and uh, change our background color. I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this hue picker for now. And now let's change the hue of the entire background here. So, which way do we want to go? Want to go pinkish? You know, we could go greens, we could go blue backgrounds, whatever we want. But I think I'm going to go a little bit on the pink side. Something like that right there. You know, now we can make it a little darker if we wanted to. Something like that. That looks pretty cool. And then we have this uh, uniformity slider. So let's move it more to the right. Move it to the left. See what we like. See, when I move it to the left, we get more shade, or more hue variations in here. If I move it to the right, everything becomes more of that same color. So I'm thinking maybe to the right a little bit, right around there. Now here's the before and here's the after. So that's pretty cool. And what if we wanted to alter her uh, top here a little bit? So now that's more of in a bluish cyan color. So let's click here. Let's get our picker tool again. Let's pick this color right here. Let's do the little trick where we pull the saturation back. Yeah, and that's targeting that color nicely. Okay, cool. So let's double click it. We can give it more saturation. And what if we wanted to alter the overall hue of it? Yeah, we can make it more blue or if we say hey we want to make it more pink to match our background maybe something like that or maybe even a little bit on the purple side a little too much saturation pull that back a little bit so here we go uh, let's close this picker here and let's click the hsl here's the before and here's the after so pretty cool or again i could do the uh, compare up here before and after Oh, by the way, see these little white dots underneath the colors here? Anytime you see a white dot, that means those colors have been altered. Well, there you go. That was the HSL and DXO color wheel and hue picker tool. A super powerful tool for making color adjustments to your images. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. Hey, please leave comments and questions in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed my tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you will be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.